If there's one thing about spiders that scares us, it's their venomous bites. There we go. Oh! Oh, yeah, that was sharp. I've taken my fair share of spider bites. Oh, oh! Oh, he's digging in there. All in the name of science. But there are spiders out there that I definitely would not want to be bitten by. A bite from this spider will give you a very, very serious reaction and a very, very rough few days. And in my years of hunting down the most incredible spiders in the world, I've heard whispers of one spider that stands above all else as the worst spider bite in North America. In the longleaf pine forests of central Florida, there are rumors of a widow spider, seldom seen by human eyes. A spider with a bite that makes all other North American widows pale in comparison. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and in my quest to uncover the secrets of the natural world, the legends of this spider have drawn me to this expanse of untamed habitat in hopes of investigating the rumors and finding out just how dangerous this toxic arachnid actually is. I'm joined by my good friend and fellow wildlife educator, Zachary Gray, as we search for this extremely elusive creature. We are deep in the Florida Longleaf, and we have only two days here. We, uh, an impulsive decision to come down here and look for these red widows. We have one weekend to find one of the rarest spiders in the country, and with colder weather on the way, these spiders are retreating into the hearts of their palmetto homes to hibernate until spring. If we want any hope of finding these spiders, we're gonna need expert help. <laughs> so, you wanna know what I know about the red widow? Yep. I know they're not easy to find. <laughs> red widow is very hard to find. Meet Daniel and Michael Dye. When I say these guys are local wildlife experts, I'm talking decades of experience in these forests, working with some of the rarest and most special animals that you could find in Florida wilderness. See, it turns out there are very few public records of red widows, and they tend to stick to very particular pockets of habitat. Without leads, there is no shot we find these spiders in time. But hopefully, with Michael and Daniel's help and a little bit of luck, we'll be able to track down this amazing creature. All right, now here, this is one of the spots. All right. And what you want to do, when you have a palm like this, especially if it's, if it's folded, you want to look down in areas like this. The red widows live in palmetto plants, but specifically, they focus on the plants that are exposed to open air in these fly-through zones. In these areas, flying insects get caught in their webs, creating a constant food source. We're fanning out, searching all of the palmettos in these open fly-through zones and just hoping we get lucky. This spot is actually pretty good. We're seeing lots of webs, lots of egg sacs, but not any live spiders. I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting a little bit concerned. Fortunately, there's no shortage of cover to flip, so there's plenty of other cool creatures we can find in the meantime. Oh, Black Widow. Come here. That's not our main widow. This is a southern black widow, but as you can see right here, she's just walking over my hand. Now, I might be asking Spencer, what is a black widow doing out in an environment? I thought they lived in people's dwellings, and believe it or not, these are not restricted to living near humans. They do actually have lots of strongholds in the wild. They'll be found, just like we found this one, underneath boards, underneath logs, inside hollow logs and hollow trees, where they can have shelter from rain and sun during the daytime. Usually these are more of a nocturnal species of spider coming out after dark to spin their webs, their very gnarly, strong webs, and hunt for prey. It's nice to remind ourselves that there are things that are a lot more dangerous than widow spiders out here. You know, we are miles from anything, and there are huge rattlesnakes, bears, coral snakes, lots of things that could mess us up way more than a little widow spider could. So seeing this little biological landmine is a nice reminder for us to respect the environment and be aware of our surroundings while we're hunting for this incredibly rare spider. Now we know black widows are venomous, but how deadly are they actually? To put it in perspective, we can compare them to a lot of the common venomous snakes here in the US. Venom toxicity is measured in lethal doses, where the smaller the number, the more toxic the venom. The southern black widow we just saw is four times as toxic as a rattlesnake on par with some species of cobra. 
So where does the Red Widow fall in here? Believe it or not, it actually falls identical with the Rattlesnake, but it's not the toxicity of the Venom that's the problem. It's how the Venom works. The Widow Spiders have a potent neurotoxin, which attacks the nervous system, a network of specialized cells that send electrical signals through our bodies constantly. Widow Venom disrupts the system by overstimulating the cells, effectively short-circuiting them. In prey, this paralyzes and kills. But in humans, it's severe nerve pain and muscle spasms for hours or even days. But the Red Widow has a toxin that binds so tightly to its receptor that the effects recur throughout the rest of the victim's life. Yeah, it's permanent. And we're out here looking through palms to find one. No wonder my family's always waiting for some kind of call when I'm out on production trips. In any case, these aren't the only spiders that use these palmettos as shelter, and Michael just stumbled onto one of my favorites. I think I got a jumping spider here. Let's see. Ooh, ooh, yep, it's home. Oh, yep, that's a, that's a regal. Hey, look at you. Well, this is a nice little surprise out here in the palmettos. It's a regal jumping spider. They are always very special to see. It's like the bold jumpers, which are one of my favorite spiders. These are incredibly intelligent. This, this little spider is actually getting ready to hunker down for the winter, and she basically is gonna shut down and go dormant for the cold months. Now, that tells us the clock is ticking on these red widows. See, right now it's even starting to rain a little bit, which means these red widows are getting ready to go climb down into the base of the palmettos and go dormant themselves for the cold months. So this is basically the last weekend that we could possibly find these incredibly rare widow spiders. And the fact that this jumping spider was getting ready to go to sleep for the year is our warning sign. Now, it's still incredibly special to see one of these spiders, but I'm gonna go ahead and let you get back to sleep and we're gonna get looking because time is running short. As the sun began to get lower in the sky and cloud cover moved in, a tight knot began to form in my chest. We'd seen webs, we'd seen eggs, but we had not seen any live widows. It dawned on me that even with our expert guides, we may have missed our window. And this is part of the risk with searching for incredible wildlife. It's why I give ranks to the different secrets I come across in my adventures in the first place. But these tiers do not do the Red Widow justice. There's a secret tier above Gem that I reserve only for the most special secrets of the natural world that I spend my life searching for. Creatures so seldom seen by human eyes, whose names have found their way into songs and legends. The types of wildlife that are only in the most remote habitats, still clinging to life in a rapidly developing world, and need our attention and protection more than any others. The Red Widow is such a special and difficult target that it lands in the prestigious legend tier. And the challenge we've seen with this spider proves that with every passing second. The first spot yielded no reds, but Michael and Daniel had one more location. And to get there, we'd have to embark on probably the craziest part of this adventure so far. Heading to the next spot, but the uh, terrain's a little treacherous, so we're gonna do a little bit of a creative maneuver to get there. Um, Zach and I are actually going to ride on Ready their Jeep. The All right. Hopefully I don't fall off. That'll be, that'll be gnarly. That's right. This is a part of the story I never fail to leave out, even still, when I recount the tale of the Red Widow to friends. Zach and I had to ride on the sides of Michael's Jeep for several miles through bear country to head to the last ditch Red Widow spot. As the branches smacked us in the face and the wind whipped around us, I couldn't help but remark on how this this was living. Even if the trail ahead didn't end in red gold, Zach and I had made good friends in Michael and Daniel, and would never forget this adventure we'd embarked on. The sun sank lower in the sky, and I was honestly worried that even if we found a widow, we wouldn't have enough daylight to finish a proper segment. Either way, we soldiered on, with one singular goal in mind. Find the Latrodactus bishop eye, or bust. We split up, fanning out over the trail, leaving no palmetto that was exposed to the open air unchecked. The air was thick with tension. Everyone wanted to be first to see one, or to even see one at all. This was it. The moment of truth. What we came to Florida to do. It's slow going out here. We've seen, we've seen signs of them. You got something? We've seen signs of webs, but is it live? Oh. It's crawling around right there. Oh my god, it's huge. Look at that. Wow, okay. So she was, she was oh, she had there. eggs. Yeah. Wow, look at you. I'm oh, surprised she was insane. in there. As cool as it is. This is what we came to Florida to see. Right in front of me 
is a red widow, a spider I've been looking for for years. And it's right there. <sighs> what I've got right here is a red widow. And you can see those legs are striking, almost cherry red. And they're really, really ooh, gorgeous spiders. Now, maybe pretty to look at, but don't be fooled. This coloration is telling me to leave her well alone. She's out here in this palmetto scrub environment where she has absolutely no camouflage. That coloration is telling us, hey, I am dangerously venomous. And believe it or not, these guys are. They are a widow spider, not just in name, but in biology. And they have a very potent neurotoxin to their name. The Northern Black Widow is the most venomous of the widow spiders. And I've actually incorrectly said in the past that these are more venomous than the Northern Black Widow. These might not be the most venomous widow spider, but their venom is actually really special. The latrotoxin these spiders possess is actually able to bind even tighter to your cells than any other species. What actually ends up happening is, even though the spider probably wouldn't kill you, uh, the effects of this bite can last for the entirety of the rest of your life. They have a permanent venom effect. So this is not a spider. I know, I know lots of you in the comments say, hey, get bitten by this, get bitten by that. No, this is not a spider that I'm gonna attempt an intentional bite with because that would be a very miserable time. Now, you might be asking, hey, Spencer, if they're so incredibly venomous, why are you handling it? Well, the nice thing about widow spiders is they're actually really chill. You know, I wouldn't recommend that anybody just go out and just pick them up like this. I've been doing this for a long time. And, you know, widow spiders behave like a lot of other species of spider. They are generally inoffensive to you so long as you don't put too much pressure on them. You can see right here, she's walking over my hands. You know, I'm not hindering her movement. I'm just kind of cushioning her fall when she decides to jump, moving my hands in front of each other so that she has, you know, more surface area to move over. And as long as I'm relatively gentle with this interaction, she'll feel just fine. You know, she's not enjoying this. She wants to get back into her little web on the palmetto, but she's not fearing for her life right now. Now, you might be asking also, is this something that you should be worried about? And the answer is, is actually no. These are not, these are not something that you're going to find in your yard. You know, some of our widow spiders do have what we call synanthropy, where they actually depend on humans for habitat, because they'll live in like your cupboards or like outside your, your house near your lights to catch insects after dark. But these guys, you're not gonna find in residential areas. You might, you might hear somebody says, oh, I found a red widow. They didn't. There's no way there's a red widow. They have a very specific habitat. These palmetto scrubs, deep, deep in wilderness. You know, they, are, they have such a bizarre biology, we really don't even know that much about them. We can keep them in captivity, but to my knowledge, no one has even successfully bred them in captivity. So to say that they're just chilling in your house is totally false. Very, very venomous, very special spider, but not something that you're gonna find right at home. Absolutely beautiful. I cannot believe that I'm sitting here with a red widow in person, caught in the wild, absolutely unbelievable. This is a true legend of Florida wilderness and something that I'm glad to see thriving out here. We've seen lots of egg sacs. We haven't seen any males, but lots of egg sacs, lots of webbing, which means there's a locally healthy population. That is a good sign for this habitat and a good sign for these spiders. Oh boy, that is special. Red widows here in Florida. We released the red widow back into the environment where she would descend into the base of her palmetto to wait for warmer weather. A fleeting encounter with a truly legendary animal, one that I will never forget, and I hope was able to show you that even the spider with the worst bite in North America is not at all a monster that wants to use its chemical power for evil, but a beautiful force of nature that should be admired and respected. Our world is filled with secrets and legends just like this Red Widow, and it's why we need to learn more about the environment around us and better protect it for the future. If you want to see an absolutely unbelievable creature I found in my literal backyard, check out this adventure where I tracked down the elusive tarantula of the East Coast, the purse web spider. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.